Uh, you tear the nervousness of, you know, through all players. I know it's still just math and poker and whatever. Okay. Oh, Phil and Gus, a couple old pals, former roommates, having some fun as they settle in for poker. Ace four for Gus, and he calls. These two used to settle in for backgammon before their days on the felt. Big slick for Locke. And he's got Gus dominated here. Phil puts in a race to 4,500. And Hanson quickly calls him. Gus limped on the button with the ace. Somewhat uncharacteristic of him. And not a bad flop for Gus. Trey Jack Deuce, Gus flops a straight draw. Better than nothing. He's still way behind to the ace king. Lock bets out 5,400. And Gus calls. Notice the card player magazine percentages do not add up to 100 as there is a 4% chance of a tie here. The turn's a queen of diamonds. Very interesting card, Matt. Phil Lock still has the lead. A 10 would give him a straight. He probably thinks the diamond on the river would be good, but Gus actually has the nut flush draw. Queen of diamonds takes the tie out of the equation. And Hansen has bet out over 10,000 in chips, 10,200. Thirty thousand in the pot. Phil Lock has no pair right now. Doesn't know it, but his hand is good. Phil folds and Gus takes down this first pot. Gus, before you muck the hand, can I pay you some cash to see it? Huh? I'll give you some cash to see it. Just cash. I'll pay you cash. You pay me cash to see it? Yep. How much cash are we talking about? Well, before I. Well, sadly, so so far, of... so far, you're not doing so good. <laughs> well, then I have to go in hundreds. I can't pay a hundred. Oh, you can't pay a hundred? Oh, then then you're out of. Oh my God! Oh, you were, had the dollar bills? No, no, no. That wasn't that wasn't gonna work. Five seven? I... What? You went a five seven? Five of diamonds, seven of spades? <laughs> no, no, no. When the dealer lifted up the deck, I could have sworn I saw those were the two bottom cards. That that would have been wrong. You did, you dirty dog. You had something like that. Oh my God! I got bluffed. Four tables in play in the clubs and spades bracket as we finish out the round of 16. And Ali, this side of the bracket is uh, littered with a lot of star power. Phil Ivey, Chris Ferguson, Gus Hansen, Phil Locke, and it's Hansen and Locke that meet here at our feature table. Yeah, Phil Locke is a guy who's known more for his shenanigans and his antics amongst the fan base than anything else. But make no mistake, he can play No Limit Hold'em. He's probably played almost as much poker as he has spent time shopping for hooded sweatshirts. Now, Gus Hansen is a guy who's earned a reputation in his early years as a wild, overly aggressive player. But, Matt, I don't see it that way. Over the last few years, he's toned it down, and if he can maintain controlled aggression in this match against Phil Locke, I think he can see himself through to the next round. <laughs> oh, gosh! Got to go back in that place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> I'm like, I want to go over there and give you a hug, but I also want to kick your ass. So somewhere in between, I got to get somewhere in between. You know, you get the feeling at some point this match will become less convivial. Suited 7-4 for Phil. Somebody hand me a dictionary. <laughs> Phil has raised to 2,800. Jack 4 for Gus. Looks like they don't want to waste any time in this match. Not going to limp in and play small pots. Perhaps a function of being so familiar with one another on the felt. Trying not to establish any patterns. Raising preflop with a wide range of hands. And middle pair for Gus, nine queen jack. Not exactly a dream flop for Phil Locke. After Gus checked, Phil bets 5,000. And Gus makes the call. Turn is a four of spades and now two pair for Gus. Phil has paired his four. Can't like the fact that Gus check called on the flop, but he's gonna fire a second barrel and a big one, 15 and change. I'm all in. And here comes Gus way over the top to put Locke all in. I should have smelt it on the flop, huh? Get a monster. This bet may have worked if Gus pair. didn't spike a four on the turn to make two pair, because that's a pretty scary flop. I'm the worst. I the lock it. folds and Hansen takes down another pot. Of course, I just gave you five. And meanwhile, over at the Ivy Tran table, a little less talking, but we've seen a lot of bluffing in this event, certainly in this round. Hasn't been working for any of the players thus far. With the stacks deeper, Matt, each player starting with the 80,000 in chips, they're going to be more comfortable to move chips around in pots, take some shots. So expect to see even more of that as this round continues. 
Flop, eight, seven, deuce. Both players make a pair. Middle pair for JC, bottom pair for Phil. 16. Phil bets out 1,600. Tran calls. Phil knows it's difficult to flop a pair. He wants to lead right out with those deuces instead of check and give JC control of the pot. But now that he's been called, he's going to check over to JC. Four hearts on the turn. Ivy has checked. Now Tran bets out 3,500. Phil has to try to figure out what JC called him on the flop with. Was it some sort of straight draw or did he have a pair? And Phil's going to put in a raise to 8,500 now. Good aggressive play from Phil. He's going to put the pressure on JC here to make a call with middle pair and a fairly weak kicker. Tran calls the 5,000. And the river. Five of diamonds. Four cards to a straight out there. Either player holds a six, and they've got the eight high straight. Ivy's bet 15,000. It's going to look a lot to JC now, like Ivy let out with a hand like 5-6 on the flop, and then check raised on the turn, and is comfortable leading out on the river. Bluff me again. Yeah, what'd you have? Never mind, I don't want to know. Big bet on a scary board, pot to fill. I'm probably going to lie to you if I tell you. Uh, yeah, I know. That's why I said I don't even want you to lie to me. And the bluffing continues. We'll take a break. Or are we bluffing? Welcome back to the National Heads Up Poker Championship presented by Vonage. Well, in 2004, former patent attorney Greg Raymer got a chance to live every poker player's dream. Battling long shot odds from the start, Raymer outlasted a field of over 2,500 players. His prize? $5 million, a World Series bracelet, and poker immortality. And an internship at Yellowstone National Park where he made good friends with Yogi and Boo Boo. <laughs> you just can't resist, can you? I can't. I love it. Suited 7-6 for Jonathan Little on the Vonage Heads Up Pocket Cam. Puts in a raise to 3300 And Greg is also suited with 10-8. Little raises like that pre-flop mat are just designed to throw your opponent off. They don't really give away any information about the strength of your hand. And the flop. Do 7-7, seven, seven, trip 7s for Little. Not much happening for Raymer. Raymer has checked, and Jonathan puts in a bet of 4,500. Now he could try to slow play in this spot, but a lot of times that'll raise your opponent's suspicions if you check on this board, so he's just going to bet out. Oh, and look at Raymer, and the bluffing continues this afternoon, up to 12-5. Raymer trying to represent the seven here, ambitious bluff on a paired board. Little makes the call. Yeah, he doesn't want to re-raise and lose his man here with three sevens. The turn pairs deuces on the board. Greg hates his hand, but he may not be ready to give up on this pot. A big bet might move Jonathan off a hand like a small pocket pair. That's 15, oh, this is going to be costly for Greg Raymer. He's bet 15,000. Little makes an easy call. And he makes it quickly. Now Greg has to be done with his hand. There's no way he can bet the river. River's a five of diamonds. Greg does check. Mullen. And Little puts Raymer all in. Very costly mistake for Greg here early on in this match. Little came in with the chip lead, and he's going to extend it here as we see yet another unsuccessful bluff in this round of play. Moving back to the feature table now, where Gus Hansen is trying to make quick work of Phil Locke. Gus has Phil out chip nearly 3-1. 13, 115, 116, 117. 117, 43, something in that range. Jack 9 here for Gus. Gus calls, and Phil was suited 9-6. He checks. And the flop brings an open-ended straight draw for Gus. Yeah, gut shot straight draw for Phil Locke, but he doesn't want to see it come in. Big turn card for Gus. He makes his straight with the king. Phil Locke has now picked up a spade flush draw. He can hit a jack to chop the pot. Phil's going to raise. After Phil checked, Gus puts in a bet of 1,600, and now Phil has announced a raise to 6,200. 
Very aggressive play from Phil Locke. He's going to try to take the pot down right here. Of course, it's not going to work. 